March 8th. And uh, if you like what we do today and you want to know more, then you might want to check out our course. I hope you have your iPhone or your iPad right there so you can check these things out. Again, even if you're on Zoom on one of these devices, you can change apps without losing the Zoom. Uh, you will hear my, you may not see the screen, but you'll hear my voice or somebody else's voice. And uh, then when you're ready to go back to the Zoom screen, you just tap on your Zoom icon. So the first thing we're going to talk about, do you know that your phone, especially uh, your iPad, if it travels with you, are tracking your every move? Uh, not only that, they are also tracking where you search. You do have some control over that. And so what you ought to do right now is to go to settings. That's the gray icon, looks like a gear. And you want to scroll down to you see privacy. And then you want to tap on location services. And I'll show you that screen in just a second, but I'm just gonna leave these three directions up to give people some time. So settings. And then down to privacy and then to location services. And what you, whoops, I just went way, there we go. What you will see is this first screen here. And once you have tapped on location services, you will see at the top of the screen location services. And so you need to um, turn that on if after watching this you want it on or you can turn it off. Now, right here, these are your apps. And you will see that next to them, you may have the words like never, while using, etc. And if you tap on the little arrow, that shows you your, your apps. So for example, I don't think the App Store ever needs to know where I am. So I have it set at never. The calendar and the camera and City Mapper do know, need to know where I am on occasion. City Mapper, especially, I'm not going to be able to find a route through a city if I don't have my location services on. But I have them indicating that they can track me while I'm using that particular app. And you see some more up here. So sometimes when you have uh, a few minutes, you ought to just take time to come again, settings, privacy, location services, and check through here and see if they are uh, where you want things to be. Now, what about tracking your physical movements? So once you're on this screen, I want you to scroll all the way down to you see system services. It's way at the bottom. Don't click anything yet, because I'm gonna talk about these little arrows. All right, so you go all the way down and Underneath that, you'll see there are three arrows. And if you read the small print, it will tell you what they stand for. So for example, the hollow arrow indicates that an item may receive your location under certain conditions. The purple indicates that the item has recently used your location. And I don't have on this screen a purple one. And a gray indicates that it's used in the last 24 hours, right? So just so you know what those arrows stand for. Okay, so let's go back here to system services. I'd like you to tap on this little arrow right there and you will get a third screen, which will say system services up at the top. 
And again, I want you to scroll down to you see significant locations. Yours will, pro will, unless you've turned it off, will probably turn, say, on. And if you tap on it, and if it says on and you tap on it, it will say, say where your, you and your iPhone especially have been in the last several days. Now, again, some, this is a personal choice, whether or not you keep this on. When I learned about this, I was watching the news and the reporter had just stopped people willy nilly on the street and said, um, showed them and they said, oh, I didn't know that. And one woman said, oh, I can track where my husband's been. <laughs> so yes, indeed, you can track if you get a hold of somebody else's phone where they've been. Uh, if you're traveling, I can see where it would be helpful because, oh, Maybe you visited a gallery two days ago and you can't quite remember where it was. If you check significant locations, the address will be there. So it's a personal decision whether or not you want that significant locations on or off. Okay, before I go on, any questions? Because I went through that pretty rapidly and I'm not live with my phone. So any questions about um, location services? Uh, Jill? Yeah? Ann Lanford, I wanted to check in and see if, uh, what if the person has, hasn't, turn your phone down, Henry. Please, I can't hear. We're getting late feedback. Okay, um, if you have an accident, I've heard that if you have, you have your phone, they, they can find you through your phone. Uh, but if you have a, that, turn off, that that's a, a little different. That's using okay. triangulation, I believe, with the GPS that's on your phone. And if so, oh, if, you, well. if your phone is okay. turned on, then it pings. It pings off the towers, as I understand it. Ed or okay. Chris, do you want to add to that? No. Oh, nope, I'm good at this point. Okay. okay. So that's when, you know, if you want, you see it on TV, that's what it's doing. It's pinging off the towers. Um, okay. This is just a little different. Probably yeah, you, it uses the same technology, the GPS, I'm sure. All right. So that's I have track. a question. Yes. Jill. Yeah. Pam. Um, when I, when I press on um, the location, it says touch ID for settings. <laughs> new locations all right so uh do you have touch id set up i didn't think i did <laughs> um is there any way as, hmm. can you skip that um it won't let me in <clears throat> um, excuse me if this I is that this is mary sue i will tell you if it doesn't work, at least on my phone, then I can put in my passcode. Yeah, that was going to be my next suggestion. Look and see if you have the option to um, put in your passcode. If not, um, no. shut your phone, or not shut it, but put everything to sleep, come back in, and it'll ask you for your passcode. Put your passcode in, and you should be able to get in. There are a lot of settings that are protected by your passcode or your picture or fingerprint uh, because they contain such personal information. Okay, thank you. So try that. If that doesn't okay. work, let us know. Okay. Okay? Yes, thanks. Okay. All right, so let's move on. This is something totally different. You can have your iPhone or iPad read to you. And uh, what, again, you're going to need to do is you're going to go to settings, back to that home or the first page of settings that has your name up at the top. And it says settings up here. And you're going to scroll down past general till you get to accessibility. 
And while you're doing that, I'll tell you a little story about why uh, Apple is so good about accessibility. It goes back to 2000. And if you remember back then is when there was the big discussion whether or not the state of Maine would provide every seventh grader with a laptop. And eventually it was agreed they would and the contract went to Apple. But our special educator said, hey, these devices have to be accessible to all our children whether they have hearing impairment, sight impairment, uh, you know, problems with touch. And so Apple was the, the first uh, technology company to really push the accessibility features. Uh, all the other ones have now caught up. But anyway, it's because of Maine. Now, I don't know if that's a myth or not, but I tell that story. So once you get to accessibility, you're going to click on that. And you're going to see a whole list here. And we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, I will tell you, you really don't, I don't think you want voiceover because that reads everything to you and it'll drive you crazy in about 10 seconds. But if you go to spoken content and tap on that, you will see this screen. And you've got some decisions to make. I usually have speak selection on. And that means if I highlight a text, like a newspaper article or whatever, then a speak button will come up and I can tap on it and it will read it to me. The speak screen I sometimes have on, sometimes I don't. Uh, it has the ability, if you swipe down with two fingers, to hear the content of the screen. I'll be honest, sometimes I get that to work really quickly, really slick. Other times, I don't. Uh, and I'm going to show you in the next screen some other options. And uh, speech controller we're going to talk about next. So if once you turn on speech selection and speak screen, you have the option of the speech controller. Now, if you turn that on, you get all sorts of directions and it tells you how you can control the speech controller. Uh, and what happens is you get this little icon with an arrow in it and it just appears on the side of your screen. So for example, when I have, um, when I have uh, speak screen and speak control, speech controller on, here is a page from my Kindle book. And there is the speech controller. If I tap on the go button, it's highlighted and it will be read to me. And if I want to turn it off, then I go there. So there may be times when you really want that to happen. Uh, you know, you could plug it in in your car charger and start off and it would read a book to you, sort of like a book on tape. Uh, other times you may find it a little irritating. Now, the other thing is, if you have speak screen enabled, you can simply say, hey Siri, speak screen. Whoop, and she just came, he just came on. Now, the issue when you use Siri is it literally reads everything. So I used it, I was trying it out, and I had a page from the Portland Press Herald. And so it literally did read everything. It read the, um, the banner, it read the uh, headlines, uh, it read the date, et cetera. But again, it is a possibility. So I just want to go back and look at that again and ask if there are any questions. 
difference between speak selection, speak screen, speak controller. Yes, Diane. So I'm taking classes at USM and I have to read lengthy essays. So it could I potentially download an essay and then have it read to me? I will. Uh, yes, I've never used it that way. Um, I have. And wow. yeah, Chris, you want to speak to that? Yeah, so um, yeah, so when I was consulting, I did a lot of driving and um, I would in between listening to to um, audio books, um, I would read, you know, papers that um, that would be sent to me by some of the consultants that I worked with. And it would it, it would it would read read them to me and you can as as Jill said in the controls you can control how fast or slow it'll read to you. Yes. Wow. Which which is pretty good. And your voice so, and the voice you can listen to the yeah. voice. There's some that are not so tinny, um, electronic sounding. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Um, I just tested that out, and by uh, um, speaking to Siri, uh, it was able to read to me. But I don't get the little sign that um, without using Siri, I don't see how I can turn on the speaking. All right. Um, so, have you gone to settings and um, set up um, speak or turned on speech selection and speak screen? Yes. And speak controller. No. You have okay. Speech controller. When you turn on speech controller, when you open a page, this little um, message box should show up, and then you would just press the um, arrow. It and does. It, huh? Yes. It, it does. Th thanks. Bye. Does that work? Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Terrific. Okay. And the other, which I, I didn't show you, is. If you even if you don't have um, speak screen on, you just have speak selection. What would happen is if I wanted to hear a section, and this wouldn't work for a long selection, but if I just wanted to hear this paragraph, uh, I would highlight it, and you know that little message box comes up: delete. And set, well, there's always a microphone. And you can just tap that, and that will read it to you. Uh, when I was writing, um, I would use this to um, listen to my own writing to catch mistakes. Because if you hear something, you're much more likely to um, catch a mistake when you hear it out loud. Because your eyes, when you're just reading it, your eyes sort of fill in the mistakes. So that's another possible use. All right, any other questions before we go on? Yes, Elaine here. Um, what you tap to highlight the text you want to be read to? All right, so on an iPhone or an iPad, you simply would like I if I want if I wanted, let's say I was I didn't have speak screen on um, and I wanted to highlight, I would tap up by you. And I would see. Um, Hi, you. Hi, you. Up here. All right. You know what I'm going to do? Let me. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to share my iPad and I'll show you. Okay. So just give me a second to sign in and to get um, something up. Come on. So, all right. All right. So, I'm going to share my screen again. This time, I'm going to share my iPad.
House passes $1.9 trillion stimulus as Democrats try to salvage wage raise. In a nearly party-line vote, the House passed President Biden's pandemic aid bill that would provide billions of dollars for the unemployment. That or somebody else? The bill. I think that's someone no, who's that's experimenting with their, yeah, with their speech. Okay, so somebody needs to mute. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I don't have speech screen on here, speak screen. So if I want to highlight it, what I do, I'm going to put my finger up on Mainers. I'm going to tap and you see how I've got that blue highlight and I'm going to take it and I'm going to go like that. And you notice then a dialogue box comes up. And so I'm going to tap speak. Okay. Was that Elaine that asked that question? Yes. Yes, that was Elaine. Okay. So Elaine, does that, do you understand now how I did that? Not really. It's, I know you wanted to highlight neighbors, but I don't know what you did. Did you hold it down to go the whole paragraph? Okay, let me show you. Okay, I'll talk through it again. So I'm simply tapping on Mainers, holding my finger down until I get that blue box. Okay, the blue box is the key. Right, and then yeah. you see that at the end of the word, there's the line with the dot at the bottom. And so that's, I'm just dragging that. And once I stop dragging it, I get this dialog box up at the top. Okay, that's how you get the dialog box. Yeah, and then I would just tap speak. Speak, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share. And I am going to go back and share again. And this time we'll go back here. Okay, are we all back to my slides? Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. So that's, that can be really handy. And I think it's also really handy to think about uh, folks we know who sometimes um, have trouble holding devices. I know my brother-in-law had a debilitating disease that uh, he lost strength in his hands. And so to hold a device would be difficult, but if he could set it on something and have it read to him, it really would have been terrific. All right, so we did that. All right, so let's talk about Siri just for a minute. I'm not mm. sure whether everybody knows what Siri can do or what he or she actually is. It's a hands-free way to operate your device. So again, you go to the settings button, which is that gray button with the gear, and you're gonna scroll down until you find Siri and search. And on a phone, you'll just see this column. This is an iPad, so you see both columns. And once you get there, and if you're on your phone, you tap Siri and search, um, and up comes this screen. And you probably want to have on, turned on, listen for, hey, sir, Siri, I can't say it too loudly because all my devices will answer. Uh, if you still have a phone that has listen to it has a home button you'll have this option your ipad will definitely have this option so in other words i can just hold down my home button on my ipad and siri will appear uh, and you can decide whether or not you want siri when your your device is locked you can pick your language it it is in different languages. It won't translate, but let's say you have a document in Portuguese. It will read to you. It will respond in Portuguese. You can choose your Siri voice. Right now I have the South African male. Uh, sometimes I have a um, Irish male. Uh, sometimes I have a female. It's up to you. Um, it will adjust over time to your speech patterns and recognize you. And you can do all sorts of things. You can make telephone calls, you can add to your calendar, you can check weather, you can get directions, you can find a restaurant. Um, once the movie theater is open, if there are any left, you can find out what's playing at the movies. So every morning or almost every morning, I talk to my sister in California 
Uh, it's how she starts her day. And, you know, it's kind of a way for us to check in that both of us are out of bed and nobody's on the floor needing help. Uh, I'm being exaggerating there. But, you know, it's going to be a point where I'm going to appreciate that. And so I don't ever tap her number in. I just got to turn everything off here. <laughs> I just say, hey, Siri, <laughs> call Lynn Hayes and mobile. And calling Lynn Hayes mobile. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and she calls it. Now, that phone number needs to be in my contacts. Um, so that's important. Uh, but if I want to add something to my calendar or um, out driving and I want to find out how to get from point A to point B, um, I just say, hey Siri, and she responds. There are some apps it won't app. Oh, the one I really like. Okay, I'll do this one. I'll do this one so you can hear it. Um, in my notes app, I have a grocery list. And so anywhere in the room, I don't even have to be sitting by my phone, I can say, hey Siri, Add dog food to my grocery list in my notes app. Sorry, notes hasn't added support for that with Siri. That's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I know I can't do it. So I do it in reminders. Hey, Siri. Add buy dog food in reminders to my list labeled dog. Telling me one moment, looking for it. That may not work. All right, well. Okay, add it to your dog list. And if I look at it, um, I don't know if you can see it, buy dog food. So uh, if I'd started a grocery list on my word processing, it would do that. I forgot that notes doesn't, doesn't work with Siri, but anyway. Um, so that's kind of handy, especially, uh, you know, if I'm in the kitchen and I run out of something, I can just yell, hey, Siri, and do it. Any questions on Siri before we go on? Nope. Jill, okay. just quickly, this is that with every yep. iOS update, Siri miraculously is getting smarter, or maybe we're getting smarter and can do more things. But um, I when I'm in the car and I shouldn't be fiddling with my phone and I don't, um, you can ask Siri to send a text, to read a text, to yes. read an email, give you directions, all kinds of things. That's right. And I have a, an older car that doesn't have the built-in Bluetooth. So that's real helpful to me. All right. Now, this is Ed's favorite. Jill, yes. excuse me, this is Barbara. So the only thing that has to be on is uh, always on under Siri. Under was Siri, only one yes. You want to make sure that th these green buttons are on. Okay. Okay. So Siri, listen for so listen for Hey Siri. Press Home for Siri if you have a home button, and allow when locked. I guess mine looks different. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it may. Um, you may not have press home, but you must have listen for Hey Siri. Yep. Yeah, that's the key. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now, slide to type. Some people love this. Ed loves this. Instead of tapping each individual letter, you can slide your finger on your keypad. So this is what you do. Once again, you are going to go to Siri. I'm um, Siri. You're going to go to settings. And you are going to slide down or scroll down to you see keyboard. And again, you need to be uh, 
Make sure that I get you in the right place. I think I just left out a, I'm sorry. You go to settings, then you go to general. There it is right on the screen. Yeah. So go to settings, go to general. Once you get to general, scroll down to you see keyboard. And then you want to turn on slide to type. And I have a little movie here. Show you how it works. Slide to type is way at the bottom. Okay, so like I said, Ed likes it. I never use it. Uh, you may love it, um, but it's it's an, it's one of those gems which, unless somebody shows you, you probably don't know it's there. May I say one word, Jill? Yes, you may. Yes, I love it. It it works so much faster. I'm not a a good typist on these little devices anyway, and it's a, it's as Jill said, it's slide to type. You're swiping across the keyboard from but you're not slowing down to hit in individual letters. So give it a try, play with it. The more you try it, as Jill said, the more, uh, the more it knows what you're trying to say. And it's pretty darn accurate, I think. Yes. So it learns, it learns how you type. Exactly. Yes. In my case, there's a lot of misspelling because I tend to go too fast. I'm just double checking because I'm not sure that it's on. Um, yeah, I didn't think slide to floating. It's not on, It's not one of the options on the iPad. I just had to double check that. Mm. Although you could probably well, get slide a, on float. You could probably get a third party keyboard if you wanted to, but. Yeah. And it's also, there's something called, which I, I'm not going over, but it is in the course, the floating keyboard, which you shrink, you shrink your keyboard on your iPad to the size of a phone iPad, and it does work on that. But on the full size keyboard, it doesn't. Jill, I just did yeah. a quick search. It looks like there is a slide to type. Well, there is when you, uh, I'm looking at my, um, it's not the, it's not one of the choices like it is on the iPhone. When I shrink my keyboard, it works. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, you, that's you, but it. that's that's a whole different thing, which I'm not covering right. today. Right. Yeah. Okay. Jill. Uh, yep. Jill. Um, Ed's Ed's Jill missed how to find that slide to type. Sure. So this is Jill on the you. iPhone. Um, so you go to settings. You go then to general, you slot, you go to settings with your name up at the top. And then you scroll down to general, you tap on general. And then you scroll again to keyboard and you should see slide to type. If you have an older iPhone, it might not be there. Okay.
All right. So if you were with us yesterday, you can daydream right now. I'm going to talk about customizing your control center. Uh, we did do this yesterday. So if you have, it doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone, if let's stop. If you have an iPhone with a home button, you are going to slide up from the very bottom to get your control center. If your iPhone does not have a home button, then you are going to go to the upper right hand corner and you're going to slide on a diagonal and you should get a screen that looks something like this. So once again, if you have an iPhone 6, and I think the 7 has a home button, you have to go all the way to the very bottom and swipe up. On the iPad, if you're up to date and have running iOS 14, you go from the upper right hand corner and swipe on the diagonal and you will also find um, your control center. Okay, so does everybody have their control center up? I'm gonna wait till you do. And if you don't, just unmute and tell me you're having problems and we'll get you there. Okay. Hearing nobody being frustrated, I'll go on. And you can always stop me. So the control center brings a bunch of apps together that you can access in one place. Uh, so if you look up at the top, you see the little airplane. That's if, you know, once we all start to fly again and they say power off or put your, um, put your devices in airplane mode, you can, uh, well, that's interesting. Elaine is being able to write on my screen. Huh. Okay. Uh, I can also control my music, uh, etc. And then up at the top, everybody's is pretty much the same. Uh, I can control the backlight. You see the little sun that controls the backlight of my device. The volume is the sound. But down below in that row of 12, I get to choose which apps are there. So for example, I have the flashlight, I have the timer, I have the calculator, I have my camera, magnifying glass, I have a variety of things. But what's cool is that now you and myself can customize what is in this lower section. So I do that. So once again, we go to settings, the one with your name up at the top, and you're going to scroll down till you see control center. And when you tap that, you will get this screen or something similar, and you have to be in iOS 14 and maybe 13, but you have, you, it says customize controls. So you're gonna tap on that. When you do, you will see a screen like this. And you may not have the exact same things. What you need to know that if you have a red button next to the app, that means it's already in your control center. The green buttons mean you can add these particular apps. So for example, uh, people now, the hearing aids can now be adjusted to the um, iPhone. And if you have one of those, then you may wanna be able to control that from your control center. So you can decide what you want up here simply by tapping here. If you wanna delete something here, you play around with the three parallel. Now I'm gonna show you one that those of you who really love music might enjoy. There is uh, Apple bought Spotify, which is a music app. 
And its icon is this little S kind of on its side. And if you put that in your control center, you see I have done that with the yellow arrow, and a song comes on, you're in a restaurant and you're hearing a song or you're hearing something on your radio and you're saying, or you're, somebody's playing music nearby. What is that? It's on the tip of my tongue. If you tap on that, and give it a couple seconds, it will give the name up here. So in this case, I was listening to the girl from Ipanema um, and James Galloway, who uh, plays the flute, was the musician. And so this app identified the music I was listening to and who the musician was. So I just share that because I know there's some people that really um, love to do that sort of thing. But your control center, again, is something you can decide whether or not you'll use it, whether you find it convenient, and you can customize it to some degree. Okay. Any questions? All right, ready to go on? Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple things you may not know about the Photos app. Um, those of you who were in the Photos course, you'll see this. You, this is a repeat, this part. So one of the cool things about the Photos app is there are special effects live loop bounce and long exposure. You can find these all organized in your photos app by going to the albums section and scrolling down to you find media types. And then you want to click on live photos. And I'll explain for those of you who, excuse me, aren't sure what a live photo is. I'll explain that in the next slide. But once you choose that live photo, what you're going to do is gently swipe your finger upwards. And you will see that if you have iOS 14, you can actually caption a photo now. Or down here, you see effects. And let me show you those in a little more detail. So one of the options is live photo. I'm sorry, live video. And or you see that on your camera, it's this yellow concentric circles. Or if it's not turned on, it's white. And if you tap that when you're taking a picture, what it does is it takes a mini video, 1.5 seconds, <laughs> before the still, then the still, and then 1.5 seconds after. So that when you open in photos, it's when you get that little jerky movement and you're saying, you know, what did I just see? Well, that's what it is. It's, it's live photo. It's a little video that goes with your uh, picture. Again, I always forget to turn it off. So most of my pictures are live, uh, but they don't need to be. All right. So um, in Photos app, you can tell whether or not it's a live photo because it will say it'll be labeled right there. All right, so either take a live photo or go to your Photos app and select an image that's live. And like I said, just gently slide up on the image. And this is on the iPhone or the iPad and you'll see loop, bounce, long, et cetera. All right, so loop repeats the mini video. It just keeps it going over and over and over again, which you might want in a, you know, if you have uh, some kind of presentation going on, you might want it, uh, or you might want to send it to somebody. Bounce is, it goes forward, then it goes back, forward and back. So let me show you what I mean by that. So it just takes a minute for it to, to get there. All right. So this is the loop. Notice Mr. Buffalo, Bob the Buffalo is just continuing taking a step forward. Now we're gonna go to bounce. I 
okay? Forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. So it's just kind of a fun thing. Uh, you may never use it, uh, but it's kind of nice to know that it's there. Long exposure is uh, what you can do on a full size camera with uh, controlling the exposure so that you make moving water kind of filmy and um, blurry. So here's an example. On the left uh, is a water pipe at the end of my road and you can see that the water's coming out. You can see the individual droplets. But when I use long exposure, when I tap on the long exposure, then you see that it becomes kind of this filmy, fuzzy stream. Um, so again, if you like to play around with your photos, uh, it's kind of a nice effect. You might want to, if you're making uh, cards or video, or not video, calendar or uh, pamphlet, you might want to uh, use that instead of the individual droplets. It's your choice. Here are two that I stole from iPhone photography school to show you um, how else it can be used. Now, while we're still in photos, you might want to hide some photos. You know, sometimes you hand your phone to somebody and say, oh, you can just look through these pictures of Las Vegas. Well, perhaps you were dancing on the table in Las Vegas, or you were playing at the roulette table when you promised you wouldn't. Uh, you can hide those photos. And um, so what you do is you select an image, doesn't matter what it is over here. I have some apple crisp. And you look for this share button. Okay, it's a square with the upward pointing arrow and you tap on it. And then usually, you know, we'd never get beyond uh, sending a message or a mail. But if you scroll up, you'll see you have all these options. And one of them is hide. So if you tap on that, then this will happen. And you, it says this photo will be hidden, but can be found in the hidden album. You can choose to show or hide the hidden album in settings. So if you want to hide this picture, you do that and it takes it out of your photos that you might hand your phone to somebody to look through and they won't be able to see it unless they know to go look um, in hidden folder. But you can also choose to hide that album totally. So it shows up the hidden albums are listed under utilities on the, on the albums section of your photos app. But if you go into settings, you can turn that off so it doesn't show up and only you know that it's hidden. Now, what if you really want to hide your picture? Well, you can use your notes app. And the notes app, one of my favorite apps is this one that looks like this. It's got the yellow top and the lines. So you would go to settings, again, that main uh, screen with your name at the top, and you scroll down till you get to notes. You tap on notes, and you will see that you can password protect your notes. And you make it, you choose it individually uh, when you create a note. So I, the reason I have passwords turned on your password turned on is I have a particular note that has my passwords, not my banking passwords, but just about every other password listed there and I have it locked. So if I were to lose my phone and somebody opened my notes app, they wouldn't be able to get in. And this is what you do. So you open notes. And you open a new note, which is this symbol down there. So if you want to go to your notes app, you can go along with me. Remember, it's the one with the yellow top. And it should be on your phone or your iPad. It comes with the device. So you open a new note. And you tap in it like you were going to write something. And this 
row of icons comes up. So you tap on the camera and you see you have the option to choose a photo or a video. So you do that, you tap done. Once you hit choose a video, all your pictures will come up and you want to tap on add and choose the picture you want. Once you do that, it will show up in the notes. You gotta remember to tap the three little dots. So you get this a lot of steps and you hit lock. And once you do that, it's locked and they can't get in without a password. So you can probably the easiest way is to hide it in an album in your photos app and just don't have the album show up on the list of possible albums. But that is another way. How are we doing on time? Okay. All right, so a lot of people like to identify and tag people. And in photos, we're still in photos. So this is how you do that. It's, a, it's relatively new. You select a photo with somebody in it. Here's a picture of Ed working at our corporate retreat two years ago. And again, I'm gently putting my finger on the image and I'm sliding up and up pops people with his face. And if there were multiple people, there would be multiple um, faces there. So I tap on the face I want to tag. And when I do that, I then get this screen and I want to add a name. So I tap add name. Guess what shows up next? <laughs> I'm gonna type in the person's name I'm tagging and then I'm going to tap next. The face is now identified. This person is now named Ed, but you gotta remember to hit done. Um, and when you use the search option on photos, and if I type in Ed, it should all the pictures of Ed should show up. Now, I have found that sometimes it doesn't work. And I tried to, and I'm in the process of researching why some photos you can't tag. And I haven't come up with a definitive answer yet. But you always now can at least add a caption by tap or by sliding your finger up on that image and having the word add caption. Okay. Now, all right, I see that we're coming up on 11 o'clock. So I want to show you a quick camera trick and then I'm going to stop talking and see if people have questions about anything about their iPhone or iPad and we'll answer it. I want to make sure everybody knows how to take a screenshot. A screenshot is a picture of what is on your screen at the moment. So in the two images you see I have simply a screenshot of my home screen but then lots of times I'm sitting at night and I'm thinking, oh, you know, the holidays are coming up. I want to decorate. Uh, so I go through and I find something that maybe I can do and I pull it up and I take a screenshot. I mean, that's a pretty simple centerpiece. I think I probably could do that. All right. So that's how I use it is I see something like a garden arrangement or a flower or something I want to remember. I take a screenshot. There are two ways to do it. One is by simply tapping on the back of your phone if you have it set up. And the other is the two button press. So let's talk about tapping on the back of the phone. You have to set it up. So you have to go back to that setting screen, which is um, the one with your name at the top. And once again, you're gonna scroll down to accessibility and tap on that. And this time, instead of going to visual, you're going to 
physical and motor. The first one is touch. So you want to tap on that. Whoops. Here I'm thinking. And when you do, you'll get this screen. And one of the options is back tap. And if you turn that on, you will see you have the option of a double tap and a triple tap. And if you tap on double tap, you will see you'll get a screen with lots of options. So I chose screenshot. So if I want to take a screenshot now, I can simply tap the back of my phone twice. I'll be honest, sometimes when I put my phone down, if I put it down hard, <laughs> I get a screenshot. Now, I don't, I, because that was the second way I learned it, it's not the one I use. I use the button method. If you have a home button, you press the home button and the on off button at the same time. And it has to be the same time. Click. And not long, just click and take it off. And you'll get a screenshot. If you have no home button, you press the on off button on the right side of your phone <clears throat> and the up volume button at the same time. And again, a click, a quick click, exactly the same time. Don't hold it down. I was showing in my, uh, when I was still teaching adult ed, I was walking around showing how I was pressing both buttons and an alarm went off because I had alerted the emergency services. <laughs> and so quickly there's a way, there's a turn off. So I, I turned it off and uh, on the way out, I was talking to the secretary. I said, oh, I set off the emergency. She said, oh yeah, I do that all the time. I, in my phone, in, I drop it in my purse and the buttons will hit. Uh, so it's a quick click, all right? So that's how you can take a home, uh, a picture of whatever's on your screen, either iPhone or iPad. And where it goes, it goes into your Photos app. So I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, covered a lot of material. Uh, I tend to get carried away. So I could go another hour, but I won't. <laughs> and questions, either on something uh, was shared or some question you have about your iPhone or your iPad, you're curious. And I'm going to stop sharing and we'll go to questions. Hi, Elaine here. What yep. do you do again if you don't have the home button to get the screenshot? You're going to hold your home button and your on off button at the same time. Okay, so there's my, um, you have, if I had a home button down here, which I don't, I would hold that down and my on off button at the same time. And it would be a quick, I can do it on my iPad, hold on. And you'll see a flash. You actually, you actually click it on and off real yep. quick? Real quick. Okay. Um, okay, so here's my, here's my iPad with the home button and my um, on off button at the top. Whoop, come on, come back. See it, hey. see it flash? Yeah, that's very helpful, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Other questions? Yes, Tom. Yes, hi, Tom. Yeah, hi. You showed how to highlight the text so that it could read to you. How did you highlight the text? Okay. Uh, let me share my screen again. <clears throat> um, I've been trying and I can't get it to do it. Okay, that's all right. Sometimes it's um, a little tricky. Come on, tap mirroring. Oh, there we go. All right, so you can see my iPad. So yep. the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure in settings under accessibility that you have spoken content speak selection on. 
And you might want speak screen on also. All right, so let me, let me open up. All right, so here's an article with speech selection, you see up here, I've got this gray. I can just click that. Oh, that doesn't work. I do it on my screen. And I get that. And if I click on that arrow, it will read everything, not just the article. So I'm not going to do that. But no, if I just wanted to read to me, I do a long press on Mainers, and I need to get that blue box. And then I can highlight okay. that that I want written or read to me. And once it's highlighted, I get this little dialogue box up here. And if I tap speak, all right, so how did that work, Tom? Do you see? If you're on your phone, it is because it's smaller, it's more difficult, I think. Boat house to highlight. California. Thank you. Did that work? Yep. Okay. Good. Other questions? <laughs> 